Hello, you beautiful viewers, and welcome back to the lonesome road of Fallout New Vegas. When last we left off, we were in Angel Cave, about to head out on our journey to help the Dead Horse Tribe. Hopefully nobody's kicked them all there down. But anyway, today before we get to, well, the main quest, I want to get started and complete the story of Randall Clark. For anybody who's curious about the full story in greater detail, or really in a greater description, I suggest checking out the Nth Apples video on it. The link will be in the description below. It gives you the... He's a great guy, has a great channel, and his quality of voice and the way he pers he depicts the stories, wonderful. So, well, not wonderful, beautiful. Sorry, get my words mixed up. Anyway, first off, we're going to talk about survival caches. They're not all marked with a handprint. That's only Dean Domino's and Dead Money, which we will get to someday. But right now, open survival cache. Look at all this. You got water, weapons, grenades, reinforced leather armor, and a cowboy hat. What more could you want? And also, survivalist bounty. Collecting all six. And I have no idea what that dead horse member is doing. It's kind of weird. Follows Jock. I'd like to speak to you, sir. What can I tell you? Everything. Okay, as soon as I say everything, the god my dad goddamn phone goes off, of course. Tell me a little bit about the area. Any interesting wildlife? Mostly it's the mountain bighorners. Whole herd of them up on the cliffs there. Usually they're not too aggressive, but lately, whew, my guess is one of the calves got lost somewhere along the way. Bighorners are communal. One missing calf, and the whole herd gets ornery. If that calf doesn't turn up soon, they might very well come down into the valley and attack the camp. Maybe I can help with that. Yeah? Hey, thanks. Most of the hunters don't listen when I tell them the problem. Just one thing. Try not to kill any bighorners if you can, yeah? You'll drive the herd off and we'll have to range farther on our hunts. What would you suggest I do instead? Hmm. You might try luring the baby out with some banana yucca. These bighorners go crazy for the stuff. Alright, I'll look into That's that. Great. Eventually. I'll help. But for right now, there's something else I wanted what to talk to you about. You? Any idea to where start looking for those pre-war supplies? The best place to look for back when stuff is the taboo places. Sorrows and dead horses don't go in there. And even white legs don't like them much. What taboo Lots places? Of them around the valley. Places built by the folk from back when. You'll know them when you see them. Scouts mark them with handprints. The handprints mm -hmm. are a warning to keep out. Angry ghosts live inside. Yeah, angry ghosts, right. Not that I believe in angry ghosts. They're just spooky old places. Right? <laughs> yep. So where should we start Lots looking? Back when places to choose from. But for the things we need, best to start with the really closed up places. Mm -hmm. Three I know of. A building down by the river called a fishing lodge. The old ranger station in the northwest and the general store right by it. Closer to home okay. might be something you can salvage from the place where the little ones fell. Just west of the eastern virgin. Okay. What's this, the place where the little ones fell? In the river, there's a twisted pile of metal and glass, all full of bones. Joshua says they were scouts, but they looked awful small to me. Lots of mm. that old stuff, uh, how do you say it, uh, electronics. Maybe you could use some of it. Probably. Let's talk about something else. Uh, there it is. I want what more about you. Why are you called Our Fuller's Chalk? scouts leave chalk signs to mark places rich with game. I'm not a full scout yet, so I follow the marks and guide the hunters. Mm-hmm. What are all these tattoos? The horses mark ourselves to commemorate our hunts. When a hunter takes a great beast, or when a youth goes on his first hunt, he gets a tattoo. Interesting. What did Joshua do for you? If it wasn't for Joshua, the dead horses would still be the whipping boys of the Zion Valley. He taught us how to hold our territory, to protect ourselves. 
He guided us away from Kaisar and showed us how Kaisar would have destroyed us. What do you know about the new Canaanites? Little bit. I met some of their missionaries a few times, but I'd never been to their city. Joshua could tell you more. Or Daniel, I imagine. What's with the shell casings on your club? We decorate our clubs with them to honor Joshua Graham. They were the weapons of his old tribe, so now they are ours. Hmm. I can't say they seem that dangerous to me. But Joshua Yeah, says bullets they won the West. Won the West? Mm-hmm. Do you remember anything about Joshua before he became your leader? Only a little. I was very young. He was... different. Prouder, yes, but harder, crueler, more driven. Really, I was terrified of him. We all were. When he came back, I almost didn't believe he was the same man. He was humbler. He wanted to protect, not destroy. Okay, I believe that is all the questions I need to ask. Now, we're not going to go take care of the big corner problem just yet. For right now, we are going to go to a cave back down through Angel Cave. Because this is the first location we will for find one of the survivalists, or Randall Clark's, bases of operation, or homes. And begin the story. Well begin to understand his story. All right. Disciple, two bears high-fiving. That is still one of the greatest Easter eggs that will ever exist. I hear some odd things about the mm -hmm. civilized lands outside Zion. Is there really a giant thunder lizard people live inside? Yeah, his name is Dino Dino. He's pretty awesome. Now, where is that cave? I'm trying to remember where it is. Tanning hide. That's the way up to where the big horners are. Where is that cave? If I remember correctly. Yep, there it is. Follow the marks. In the water. There are two ways into this cave. One down here through the water. Which is a bit of a swim and could possibly end up in drowning. Or we take the other route, which is through the actual entrance. So, let's see here. Is that my map? There it is. Fallen Rock Cave. So, Dead Horse Camp right down there. The way out we came in that way. But for right now, time to go into the Fallen Rock Cave. Now, I'm going to say this right off the bat. This place is going to be filled with so many goddamn traps. Like the shadow of a ghost. Yeah, we got to take it extra careful. Tripwire, which means grenades and shotguns. Mainly shotguns. If you didn't deactivate that, you're going to eat a shotgun shell. A few shotgun shells. Your shotgun. Thank you. Wooden crate with some anti-venom and water. Go over here. Another one to disarm. More K fungus. Some spare shotgun shells. Always lovely to have. Who doesn't want a little boomstick ammo? Because j just look at this. Like how well this was set up. You come rushing into this cave, try and kill him. Bam! 12 gauge round, 20 gauge round, ripping your chest a new one. Oh, frag lines too. Can't forget these are little hot potatoes. <laughs> we'll just take it slow and steady. You rush, you die. Well, not die probably, but take some serious damage. Or could possibly die. But I myself like to take the it nice and slow. And the green monster men aren't native to Zion. Nope. Wonder where they came from. A little place called Vault 11. Or 22. Can't remember the number. Wait, there's a tripwire there. Where the hell... What does that tripwire activate? Is there grenades above me? Huh. Well, now. Oh, jeez, I almost walked in that mine. 
Looks like somebody else tried to go through here. And apparently ate a shotgun. Ooh, recharger pistol. Those are kind of rare to find. More K fungus, which is actually quite useful because it lowers your radiation and is food. Let's see here. Okay. I know there's something else down here. There's a few more traps. That's his main camp down there. But we're going to keep going. Because I know there's something else here. Ah, here's the uh, water entrance. Well, actually, no, this isn't the water entrance. Where is the water entrance? Hmm. Gather a bit more K fungus, because that's always good to have a little anti rad food. Very careful. Oh, yeah. Teddy bear. Hmm. Oh, what's that blinking behind it? Let's go touch it. Who wants the teddy bear? Not me, I, says I. Now where is that? Ah, double rig shotguns right there. Better drink. Some wrenches, some more ammo. Like I said, this guy is a master of combat. Was a master of combat. Because, like, look at this place. You walk into this place just without thinking you are a dead man. Yep. He truly was a survivalist. Alright, now let's do a little repair and see if I can empty out some inventory. Also, something I forgot to adjust last time. Display, HUD capacity. Make that full. There we go. Much better. All right, let's see here. Make sure my armor's reinforced. And let's see here, reloading bench, powder. Scrap metal. Gecko hide belts, I could use Get a little more recycled ammo. And apparently get a challenge complete. Crafting veteran. Craft more items at the workbench and just anywhere in general. Alright. Who keeps that knife in a storage thing? Salt upon wounds butchered everyone in New Canaan and nailed their cor corpses to the cliffs. Damn. That's some heavy stuff. But still nothing compared to what I've heard uh, Kaisar has done. Now let's see. There's a couple more things in here. Campfire. Can't really make anything. Campfire sack. No. Some scrap electronics and some wonder glue. Can I make anything for you? Weapon repair kit. Yes. Yes, I can. Actually, since I'm here and I have the... And I just made one. I have a repair kit. Boom. Could be better. Let's use one more. There. And another survival cache. More 20 gauge rounds, grenades, a doctor's bag, TNT, or dynamite, energy cells, a merc, adventure outfit, nah. There's a settler outfit, no. There we go. What else? One under wonders. Sacred Daruda root. Some wonder glue and such. And a nice bed if you're tired. I don't know how you sleep on it, but should be able to. And a compliance regulator, one of the unique weapons in this area. It's not the greatest, but it has an added stun effect on critical chance, on critical hits, so, you know, it's something. Alright, as uh, so I'm super weighed down by this stuff, let's just go over here. Do a few more repairs. Now, can I drop anything to get rid of some weight? Um, yeah, I think a few fission batteries should help me alleviate a few thousand pounds. Now, for terminal number one. The story of Randall Clark. So, anybody who's a major buff 
for uh, Fallout fans, knows that in 2076, if memory serves, was when the bombs fell. So this is 2077. This is a year after it happened. So let us begin. October 28th, five days on foot. Still can't sleep. Outside, it's like nothing happened. Sky looks wrong, and that's all. Hike back to over... Turns National Guard truck near Torqueville. After blisters heal, maybe. Looks like USGS team was researching something here in the cave. In cave. Cleared out when bombs fell. Left equipment behind. Probably thought they had families to run to. October 19th. Char. Must have said that this out loud a thousand times walking here. Maybe writing it on it will feel more like you heard. You were right. I was north of Spanish Fork. Took the 77 along the Provo Bay to steer clear of town. Would have been home in an hour. Engine died. Truck just stopped. So did a Chrysler in the other lane. Knew right away. First nuke hit the SLC inside a minute. I was looking south. Lucky man. Flash behind me so bright looked on. the world looked on fire. Old couple from Chrysler start screaming they can't see. Didn't want you die, Char. Chow. Saved my eyes. Counted 12 more flashes in the next 7 minutes. Ground shook each time, 18 seconds later. When nothing hit for half an hour, took a look. Globe of fire where you and Alex died. Didn't kid myself. Didn't know what to do. Grabbed my pack and rifle. Saw to the old couple. Sat them up against the car. Let them hold and comfort each other. Told them I was going to get help. Everything be okay. One bullet through each hit. Through both heads. Instant. Five day hike back to Zion. You told me. Stop running off to the wild. But man belongs with his family. You were right. You were right. You were right. You were right. Wasn't there to hold you and my boy. Died without me. Never touch you or him again. Should shoot myself. What I deserve. Can't. Maybe soon. October 31st. Black rain falling outside. Geiger counter jumping. Should let it kill me, but bottling water from back of cave all the same. November 2nd. Sounds dead outside, but can't look. Geiger counter goes lethal 15 away, feet away from cave mouth. Do the math. Radiation goes down bef before water runs out, or I never leave this cave. Year 2078. January 1st. Happy New Year. Two months in the cave. Still lethal outside. Don't get it. In the army, they said two to four weeks cleared fallout. Less than a month's water left. Been mopping co up condensation off cave walls. Wringing out shirt into bottles. Trading calories for H2O. Food stocks holding. Thanks, USGS. If there was even a chance, I'd see the two of you again. I'd run outside. January 10th. Sounded like a windstorm out there for two days. Radiation down 500. What happened? January 15th, took a peek. Snow. It glows green. January 28th, radiation low enough I could risk a short exposure outside. More important, cave stream now drinkable if I use rad drugs. January 30th, there's nothing alive out there. Now that is our first log from this mysterious gentleman. We're going to be trying to find the rest of them in this session, I guess you could say. Oh well, yeah, that's actually how I usually name these things. Sessions. So for right now, we're going to leave this dank old cave and see what other goodies we can find. <laughs>